We are sailing this yacht around Western Europe. We're living on board, so this is our floating home. Careful. John and I have embarked on a 2,000 nautical mile adventure. It's literally pulling me a boarding mission. We started in Barcelona, have circumnavigated Mallorca, and now our goal is to sail over to Italy and France. Over the past few weeks, we've anchored off remote beaches, have given you a full tour on board, and have just sailed to our last port of call here in Mallorca. But on this episode, we're preparing for a huge and exciting sail over to France and Italy. We've just pulled up to Port de Palenza, which is a town so beautiful, it brings us to tears. I legit have goosebumps over my entire body. But it's in the bay where our home is anchored. Oh my God. The chaos unfolds. It's not only a runway, oh! but just as we leave for France, we're forced to turn around. Flickering in where the engine bay is. And our worst nightmare unfolds in the middle of the night. Holy sh! <laughs> what the heck is happening? That's just crazy. That was his first reaction. We've been sailing for most of the day, seven hours straight. And we've just arrived to Port de Palenza. Excitement is high because this is our last town we're stopping at in Spain. Port de Polenka. What is it, Palenza? Something like that. Is yeah. it Palenza? Because it has the sea Ask with a Kelly. little. Definitely not Polenka. We are at Port de Polenka. No. Port de Polenka, mate. <laughs> we have just had a beautiful day sailing today. It's been huge. Seven hours, but we've just arrived to Port de Polenca. We had a really productive sail here. Are you enjoying the nav station? Just uh, I think it's oh actually, God. this is actually an editing station. This is a raw behind the scenes of running a YouTube channel from a boat. Like look at all these SD cards. Another one here in my GoPro and three solid state drives and another hard drive. It got so hot today that midway I just had enough. I had to jump in the water. It was very scary, very nerve wracking. Do you want to fly? Yes. John somehow lifted me up with one hand. <laughs> oh my god, you're so strong. Ah! Refreshing but salty. I just had a shower before arriving here. A really quick brief one. On board, we're trying to conserve our water as much as possible. So as we're shampooing, the water goes off. Scrub it up, dub, then the water goes back on. So we're just arriving to Port de Polenza. I'm so excited because it is so mountainous here, but not only that, the town looks historical. It looks different to all the other Spanish cities through Mallorca. I'm so excited to show you this place. We're gonna put down the anchor. Welcome to a day in the life of Port. I'm not gonna lie, we have a lot to get done while we're here. And one of those jobs I was tossing up whether to take you behind the scenes for or not, but I think you're gonna like it, so let me explain. I've been trying to figure out a way to replace my income while we're living on a boat. As most of you know, it's been about two years since I quit my job and left the nine to five. We're teaching Cal some videography tips here. I don't know if you can see the wide angle. I hope so. <laughs> I'm just a girl with a dream to sail Europe. So I thought I'd share a few of the ways that we've managed to keep afloat. This is called a wide shot, establishing shot. This is setting the scene. For the first time today, I'm doing something completely new. and I've never done this before, so I'm a little Second. nervous. This is hilarious. This is gonna be a freak. I'm a shoot. I'm actually doing some paid filming for a brand. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay I think I got a good angle. It's super fun. I dabble in freelance work like this to subsidize my income. And if you've ever considered working remotely or on board a boat, you can. For me, it looks like this. And there are plenty of online marketplaces for freelancers to find work. Lights, camera, action. action. And squeezing it in before dinner to help pay for dinner is called compromise and balance. So I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes. So as we were filming this little brand thing, I noticed a couple of people, well not a couple, six people eyeing off the boat. They've just sailed from Antarctica. We are just invited them on board. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hey, Christina, how, how do you do? I'm Nicholas. 
Yeah, the first strangers we've had on the coast. First one. They're nice boats. You guys just came from Antarctica? Sail Yeah. That is so cool. We were intrigued in their story. Where are you from? Australia. But as our neighbours, they were intrigued in ours and the boat we were on. So we explained how it all started and how we got here in a nutshell. This is my boyfriend. So John was a pilot. He was stood down. I was a journalist. And we had, we've we never sailed. No one in our family had sailed. John and I always wanted to sail in Europe. So we decided to just buy a boat. So we bought a 50 foot Big boat. Big boat. Big boat. One that made our hearts full out of our chest. Yeah. Your first experience? First experience. First. first experience. But we had had five days competent crew course. Yeah. Five, days. Five, five days. Five days. So if you're new here, our boat journey started two years ago. Feel free to go back, watch our mistakes, plenty of mistakes, our growth, and how we ended up on this brand new Juno Yachts 55. But right now, we're getting hungry. Our last dinner in Spain is cooling, so we quickly showed our neighbors around. Next minute. Big salon, eh? Yeah, big salon. We can dance here. You can dance? <laughs> <laughs> you want to dance? I can dance. Big and somehow, here we were, dancing with Nisiso from Chile on the back of our boat. God, you better watch <laughs> out. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. Yeah. <laughs> Good dance. Ready? Oh, Christina, Yes. <laughs> okay, so where were we? Dinner, that's right. As we tended ashore in our dinghy. I'll fill you in on the exciting plans to sail to an incredible French island to our east. It's called Corsica. In 24 hours, we're meant to leave Port de Palenza and start the 300 nautical mile sail. But some safety concerns have propped up and it's thrown our plans into chaos. So we're having to come up with a solution and fast. I'll explain once we have some food in our bellies. Down this way or that way? Rock, paper, scissors. I'm this way, you're that way. Alright, which way is that? Ah, uh, this way. So if you find yourself in this small resort town, you'll notice the buzzing beachfront strip lined with markets and cafes and laid back restaurants in the back streets. We find a spot, order wine, and start talking about this crossing. Oh, you want me to say when, when? When? You see, we should be able to sail straight across but instead, our route is about to turn into a marathon. John can explain. I just can't accept that we can't go straight across. Yeah. My brain is struggling to accept that that's a safer option. On our sail over here, this is the conversation we had. Yeah, I've just got the laptop out and I'm just currently looking at departure planning on predict wind. We got this just before we went away. It's actually been really helpful because we've got a small problem where we, we don't have an EPIRB on the boat. And it's something to do with the registration and the MMSI because it's a brand new boat. We're restricted to staying within 60 miles of the coast at any one time or safe harbour. So what I've been able to do is put in a series of waypoints which keeps us within 60 miles and then just let it have a think about all the departure times and then you can tell us what the best time to go is, which is pretty good. So this would be us departing tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. This would be the first one and then that's six hours later, six hours later. So we kind of need to go early to avoid that normally. See if we can get to there, that'd be fine. We're gonna be motoring quite a bit of a... Yeah, nearly. Instead of 180 miles straight across, it's gonna be closer to 300 miles. I don't know if that's safer or not, because you're spending three days at sea versus like a day and a half. So I don't know that it's safer necessarily, but that's the rule, so that's what we've got to work with. We've got a PLB, like one of these, but it doesn't meet the requirements for the French. And the reason why it doesn't meet the requirements is because this battery runs out in 24 hours, but an EPIRB runs out in 48. That's and right. EPIRB's registered to the ship with the ship's MMSI, so when you set it off, they'll know who you are. So it's down here, and these are the waypoints. We've got to go around to the bottom of Corsica. It's so, so close. Short. It's so we close yet so far. Yeah, I know. I don't think I've preferred myself for three days yet. Like, I I feel like I'm burying my head in the sand and just hoping for a miracle. <laughs> and if that doesn't happen, then I feel like we're just, can we just go and like risk it? We can just turn that way and go now. It was so tempting, but we got to do the right thing. Oh my gosh, that looks incredible. 
just to give you a perspective, that is how big it is. And besides, we've heard so much about Palenza, there's no way we could just sail past. I thought this was the historical area. It is not. The historical area is about 15 minutes away from here. So tomorrow we're going to jump on a bus, we're going to make our way there. Bon appetit! Hang on, where are we in Spain? What do you say in Spain? I'll get back to you. last night. Did you want to tell them? No, you can't. It was so hot. There was no breeze. We left this hatch open. Oh my gosh, Mozzie's coming in. We were up for like an hour swatting them. And it was so hot I couldn't go back to sleep. So I decided to make my little bed out here. Did you sleep better, John, after I came in here? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Good morning. In okay. other news, I need to clean the paddle wheel and I'm looking for a volunteer's toothbrush. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. The paddle wheel is literally directly under the boat. As water flows over it, it spins and tells us how fast we're moving through the water. But from time to time, growth gunks it up and it stops spinning, something we need to address before our big crossing. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing your undies. I'm not sure if you noticed. It was, it was like the middle of the night. I couldn't find my shorts, so I just stole some of yours. While I clean up the saloon, John's getting in the water. He lost rock, paper, scissors and is armed with his toothbrush. Not mine. Oh, it's so hot. We're getting ready to visit the ancient town of Palenza this morning, nestled in the northern cape of the Tramontana Mountains. But it means we're going to have to leave the boat unattended. It can be risky, especially in a bay as busy as this, where we witnessed something incredible here this morning. Oh my gosh! One other incident that's going to make us scream here in the bay. Cal, we need to put this on ASAP. Oh, dragging! But first, we have an exclusive deal from our sponsors, Surfshark. So I'm just booking some flights online. We have a really exciting trip to New Zealand coming up, which I'm really excited to share. We're going to be filming when we're over there. But just quickly in relation to these flights, the more that I search, the more the prices are going up. And if you've ever wondered why this is, let me explain. Airline, car hire and hotels use something called dynamic pricing, which in simple terms means they're using your location, your IP address, and your browser history to determine specialized pricing, which is unbelievable. But we have a little hack to beat the system. So let me show you how Surfshark works. So right now I'm physically here in Spain and I'm using a Spanish server. I'll search for our flight Brisbane to Queenstown on the 30th, you'll see the price comes up as $733. So you can take note of the price. Now, if I quickly clear my cookies and browsing history and select a different server, let's try New Zealand. Let's see what happens. The price comes up as $686. So that's a difference of around $50. It's the best hack ever. And the cool thing is you can try it over and over again until you get the cheapest price. So we use the Surfshark app on 
our phones and also our other devices to unlock websites and also access content we couldn't otherwise because of geo restrictions, especially when choosing a movie on Netflix or Amazon. This is amazing. And right now you can get an exclusive Surfshark Black Friday deal. So just use the promo code Christina's to get up to an additional six months completely free. Just head to surfshark.deals forward slash Christina's. Okay, let's go check out Polenza. We're kind of in a rush. The bus leaves in nine minutes and it's a seven minute walk. It's 11.38, not many other stores are open. Most people here have their siestas from like two till four. It's understandable. It's hot. We're just racing to get the bus. If we miss it, it's an hour and a half's wait, so. Oh, that would be so brutal. The plan is to squeeze in a couple of hours at Palenza. Then we'll race back to the boat where we have a huge decision to make. Do we run the risk and sail straight across or do we begin the three day extended journey? Either way, we're checking the weather for both options, just in case. The 15 minute bus ride transports us to what feels like a fairy tale town from a children's book. It's narrow winding streets, traditional stone houses and millionaires homes perched high with sweeping panoramic views. You're into postcards all of a sudden, why is that? We send them out to our patrons. <laughs> this is exactly what we needed, a taste of land life before we go completely off grid. I need to get your reaction. It must be delicious. <laughs> this is watermelon and mint fresh. Yeah. It's bloody sensational. Quenching the best. Have you had some? Yeah. Is that how you knew it was so good? Yeah. <laughs> There are two incredible reasons why this place hit different. Tell us you're promotional today. I'm crying. It's hit a... You can't tell if it's sweat or tears, but I'm, it's half and half. <laughs> I guess this is a really special day today because it's one year since Kel quit her job. She's here in Europe for the very first time. It's a brand new continent and it is overwhelming, right? Yeah. It's yeah. so beautiful that it, it, it literally like makes you emotional. I just walked into that church and it just like hit me all of a sudden. I was like, what am I doing here? Like, this is just crazy. I don't know. Yeah. I had that feeling when John and I went to Rome for the very first time and we saw the Colosseum. I remember just like tearing up. Yeah. Yeah. And like watching you tear up, it brings that all back. <laughs> the memories are flooding in. The background John and I met at school. We've been with each other since we were teenagers and together we saved hard. And our first trip to Europe was when we were in our mid twenties. I've pulled out the archives for this and I've since realized we actually had a bit of a passion for film well before YouTube even existed. But at the time, we found a cheap cruise and it stopped in Rome. And it was when we visited the Colosseum that I first felt overwhelmed by travel. Tears welled up in my eyes, just as they do for Kelly today. And it feels like we're all experiencing Europe for the very first time. Isn't that beautiful though? We just had a group hug. John, can I ask you a question? <laughs> Have you ever gone to a place as a bloke that makes you feel something? Uh, well like, <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> and just ahead of us, staring us right in the face, are the Calvary steps. Each step represents a day of the year. Today's one year, Kel has quit her job, and we're just about to do these stairs, and it just so happens that there's 365 of them. <laughs> oh, why am I gonna cry now? <laughs> Now we're going to go on each one, and Kel's going to show us a photo from every day of last year. What are the chances of this? I legit have goosebumps over my entire body. Dude, that's ridiculous. It's For Kel. <laughs> this is my moment. At the top. That literally has to be fate. How do you even orchestrate that? Oh my, it's literally a divine path. <laughs> waiting in the undertow. It was on about the 90th step, or three months into the year, where something truly magical happened for both of us. This is about the time of the Annapolis Boat Show. Yes. Where we were this far away from each other, and yet didn't know each other. Yeah, how crazy. I was taking a photo of Sailing La Vagabond's boat. And, and I was in said photo. Yeah. So crazy. So crazy. It's funny talking about the Annapolis Boat Show because that was a really like pinnacle time in 
in John and my life as well because we had just sold to Kana. We were boatless and were confused as to how our future looked. We knew that we wanted to get on a boat again really soon, but we also knew that John had to go back to work. But it was at the Annapolis Boat Show where we met the CEO of Juno and Paul Fenn, and that's when they offered us the 55 all those months ago. And you know, here we are right now on her. And that boat show obviously is so pinnacle to this trip. Kel being on the trip, us being on the 55, us being here in this very moment, all happened because of that one show. It's funny how you have like these sliding door moments or these moments that happen for a reason you can't really explain until it just clicks. You realize, wow, like if we didn't go to that show, how would this year look? Okay, this walk is taking way longer than what I anticipated. Hey guys! I never knew oh, it. Sweaty group hug. Oh, sweaty group hug. Oh. <laughs> While I was bleeding in the undertow, undertow. John just went to town. He looked for an EPIRB, which would have allowed us to have enough safety equipment on board. Turns out they don't have an EPIRB here at um, Porto de Palenca. Palenca. Oh. oh. Speaking of the devil, he's just calling. Hey, John. He's concerned about the crossing. Hey, what do you think? Man, something about this doesn't feel right doing this. What doesn't uh, feel right about it? Well, it just, it just seems crazy. I know. Maybe we'll just get back to the boat and we'll just get going. I don't know. We'll just get it done. We might end up in some pretty strong wind, but like, the boat's good for it, so. So while I prepped our food, John returned and made sure everything was in order before what was to be the biggest crossing of our lives. We're in new territory. We've never been in these waters before. We're hoping that the weather gods are going to treat us well. We'll be there soon. We lifted the tender, put out fenders. The provisioning has been done. Looks pretty good in the fridge if I do say so myself. I'll show you in a moment. Got carrots all ready to go, hummus. Um, plenty of cheeses in here. We also have some celery sticks. Down here we have all our proteins and some cold drinks. And then we made one very last stop to the fuel dock to squeeze in some diesel in our tanks. It's lazy. Okay. Why is it lazy? Using the bow trusses. <laughs> wow, it's fast, John. It's going in real fast. Thank you. How good is this service? Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. We don't know when the next fuel dock will be, when we get to Sardinia or Corsica. We've used around half a tank of fuel so far. 215 litres and a bag of much needed ice cost us 350 euros. Oh my gosh, that is the best thing I've seen all day. From now on, the boat's ice maker stays on. Icy water. Yes, thank you. Look at us. All oh, the sweat. The glow is real. <laughs> Voyage. Yeah, we'll see you soon on there, huh? Okay. I look forward to seeing your comment. <laughs> have to say, hi, I'm Tony from the petrol station. Petrol station. <laughs> see you guys. Get into a tumble. Waves that shake me out. Okay. This is it. Out of this is it, guys. We are just messaging our families. Uh, we're telling them that we will be off grid for around four days. We just don't want them to panic. Never been so easy. Losing my direction. My bearings have me south of home. I've been wrong before. Not that we've done a lot of big passages, but hopefully if the weather models are correct, we'll be able to stay ahead of the weather. It should be a really nice passage. We should be able to do some sailing. There'll be a fair bit of motoring. You get into the routine after a couple of days and you actually don't want it to end. And you have this feeling that you want it to continue as you're getting close to land. I can see there's Bernard Montessier. He did the Golden Globe and 
it was supposed to be around the world race and as he neared the finish line he decided to just keep going and he did like almost another lap or half a lap he ended up in like Tahiti or something one thing I noticed as well when we did the Hobart to Sydney you can smell land when you get close to it and you don't realize that that's what you're smelling until you go to sea and you don't have that smell and then you come back to land and you're like oh. what does land smell like because I don't know what land smells like tell me in three days time but a couple of hours into the sale we had a problem tonight uh, I would have preferred to have made this back when we were at anchor I absolutely hate boiling water while we're underway particularly in rough seas where kind of what we're dealing with now but have a look at this gimbal I absolutely hate cooking pasta and anything with boiling water while we're underway but it's just a shame that we ran out of time and we weren't able to do this at anchor. I'm gonna keep very far away from the water. I'll like be standing back at all times. The pasta is already on. Yeah. And while I was being unsafe, John decided to carry out a safety briefing. Making sure we all knew where the life raft was and how to deploy it, we installed jack lines in case we see rough seas, and we finally got around to clipping lights on our life jackets. We even said goodbye to Spain, like it was the very last time. Oh my God. Bye Mallorca. I feel like I want to capture this moment in my mind forever. Like, look at this. Wind's 180 degrees from where it's forecast to be already. The actual problem happened while cleaning up the dishes. Our water pump stopped working. With no way to flush our toilets or access fresh water in an emergency for three days, we decided to turn back around. Back to the bay where we started. Except this time, an even more serious situation unfolded in front of us. John think there's a boat dragging into it. Yeah, fenders. Oh my. Join us next time as we brace for impact. It's free to click the like button and it's a huge support. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. And if you'd also like to support us further, join our crew on Patreon for extra content and giveaways and go check out Surfshark, our amazing sponsor of this video. What was in that gelati?